So we are going to record it and there we go. So welcome everybody. This is the second uh, masterclass webinar in this series. We're going to go through a number of different steps to give you everything you need to know to uh, start a online meditation class. And the reason we're doing it in chunks like this, well, there's a couple of reasons. One, so it's easier to digest. But the main reason is that we put it into bite-sized pieces so that you can learn one thing and then go and take action. So tell me, uh, for those people that were on, on Saturday night, who has gone and started their Zoom account? Hands up. Good, good job. All right. There's quite a few hands up. But that's good news. And then the next thing we asked you to do last week was to uh, send a uh, possible dates or send some dates that you'd like to put forward. Even if you put it in a couple of weeks or three weeks down the, line, the track, uh, think about some dates when you might do your first webinar class, whether you just do a one-off or whether you schedule one per week or one per fortnight. Who has sent their dates to Sarah? Okay, a couple, two or three. So um, I urge all of you to take action. Um, it's easy to sit on the um, your side and look at these webinars. Um, and I know it can be scary to uh, take that next step and just plunge right in. Uh, but I suggest um, that, yeah, jump in the deep, deep, deep end. It's the best way to learn to swim. And really, it doesn't matter if you don't, if you make a mess of the first section, session, that is fine. People will forgive you and you can move on and you can only improve from there. So the biggest takeaway for me is to make sure that you take what we're telling you and to put it into action steps. So uh, we, Manu will go through the steps uh, or that we will cover what we did last week, next week, and we'll give you a, a also a forward as what we're going to be talking in the next two weeks. Please put them into action. And then to just incentivize you that one little bit more, uh, Mana, Andy and I are all coaches. And so we're going to be offering you a coaching session if you, you know, watch all four um, webinars and particularly put those into action and get some classes up and running. So that's a little bit of an incentive for you to uh, take action on what we're trying to um, teach you. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Andy and uh, thank you very much. I, I do, I am checking that kids are going to sleep right now, so I may disappear from time to time, but I'll be back as they fall asleep. But uh, thank you and over to Andy. Good evening and good morning from wherever you are in the world. Can you hear me? Zach, can I have a show of hands if you can hear me okay? Fabulous. So like, we, like Pete rightly says, the last session was about taking action. We've chunked this down especially so you can do small things and you don't get overwhelmed by the breadth of things that you have to do. And this session will be no different. But before we get into this session, is there anything specifically, has anybody struggled with anything that they'd like any questions answered before we move on to this session? And don't be shy because the question that you want to ask is probably the question that somebody else wants to ask as well. So we might just spend five or 10 minutes on what's needed in just making sure that you're all up to speed and you all know exactly where you are because this session is quite tech heavy before we get on to some of the, well, I'd call some of the fun stuff in, in the next session. Um, but if, if is, there, is there any questions that anybody in particular has of you? Um, you want to either raise your hand and we'll unmute you, or you can put it in the, in the chat box. So has everybody got organized? You've all got a Zoom account now? Oh, we've got a hand up there. Uh, can we? Okay, can, can somebody just help? I, I, I've not got a co-host here. Can somebody just unmute there's somebody, a, please? There's a question from, um, from Dinesh on the chat box. Hmm. What time do you suggest if uh, we individuals start a session? Is that right, Dinesh? So with regards to your own meditation session, are you, is, that, is that what we're talking about, Dinesh? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I guess, I guess I would keep it to something, if it was me, 
how to keep it something similar to what you've potentially done before. So if, you, if your meditation class started at seven o'clock, then potentially just, just so you've got somebody, uh, it, it's, it's not out of the ordinary for people. So if you just uh, put in the same time, especially at the beginning, then I think that would be the best way forward personally. Has anybody else got any, any input on that? Yeah, I think Dinesh, uh, I've been working with few people and the same question they had as well as to what is the best time for your webinars. And I think the standard time seems to be between 11 and 1 for homemakers and it's between 5.30 and 8 for the people who are working. So that they seem to be kind of most popular times where people are attending webinars. And also, I saw quite a few updates on Facebook where when they're doing FB Live on meditations, about 8,000 people were watching FB Live in the night about 10 p.m. So if it, if it works out for you, but that's the, that's the statistics. So 11 to 1, 5.30 to 8 is around that time, or you can go a little later in the night about 10 o'clock or so and just run one hour session. Yeah, I think I think just one other thing to say here. Sorry, Pete. I'll, I'll just but just just one other thing to say here is remember that you are going to be recording this session if you want, so it can be played as a library later. So you can potentially run it as a live session, but then you can you can have a membership site as well where people can go and and, and watch it at their own leisure as well. So you've got a couple of options there, Dinesh. Peter, sorry. Uh, I'm just saying, having said that, what, what uh, Manus said was true, but now everything's out the window because people are home the whole time and they're staying up late. So, you know, <laughs> who to know? You could just, you, why not go and try it at a time when other people aren't doing meditation sessions and you might get more. Uh, the second is there's a few people that have asked, you know, the time duration then normally we have a half hour meditations or we have two half hour meditations in the space of an hour. Well, they're usually 15 to 20 minutes with a bit of chit chat on either side. Um, I will say this, uh, maybe this is more, we might cover this in the next lesson more, but I'll give you a preempt is when you're sitting in front of a TV screen and the person on the TV screen is not saying anything like that, it actually, People, I guess, switch off quicker, uh, possibly, uh, when they're doing that. So you, I would like to get some feedback on this. My gut feeling is that you're going to have to be a little quicker doing the meditation um, when you're doing it in front of the screen. So where we might have taken 15 to 20 minutes, you might want to bring your meditation down to about 10 minutes when you're doing it live. Now, the exception to this, if it's people are not looking at the screen and they're listening on their headphones, and this could potentially be better, is as you can imagine with a guided meditation, you can relax back in your chair and you can listen that for, for a longer amount of time. So if you get people to switch off their uh, screens or whatever and listen to it on their phone as they're sitting, they might be a bit more patient. But uh, just uh, that's so... I would start off with 10 minute meditations, but I would be curious down the line to get some feedback as to how long you can push the public before they get bored and whether you can do 20 or 30 minute meditations. Okay, great. So I hope that answers your question there, Dimesh. Is, is anybody else, I saw a couple of other hands go up earlier. Is everybody else got, anybody else got a question? Yes? Jules, Jules, sorry. Can we just unmute Jules? Hi. Um, yes, and I'm not sure if it's a question for yourself or for Mena, um, but I was just wondering, um, and I didn't briefly chat to her today. Um, so when you're a paid um, Zoom member, apparently you can change your URL for the personal ID. Um, but I'm just wondering, do you, can you change it to a business name or um, when you get the new ones with each meeting, can you update them as well so they're not just numbers and letters or, or what happens yeah. with that? Okay, I'll take that, um, Andy. So, Jill is hi. We have been chatting almost. Hi. Yeah. 
So with your URL, you only have the facility to edit to the numbers, the only digits. So you can't have any alphabets or any other format. So probably a few people, I did go and see a few other accounts this afternoon on another meeting and what they're doing is probably they're remembering their birth dates or wedding dates because it only allows digital personal IDs and not alphabets. Yeah, and yes, from, from my, what I've seen, even the basic version allows you to change your URL. All you have to do is go into your uh, profile and edit the, mass, the meeting PMI and you can give your digits, so it, it should work. Another one is if you want to make your own web page and put a great big button in the middle of your web page with a link to that meeting URL, and then you can of course have any URL you want, and then they go to that web page and then click the button which starts the Zoom meeting. That's another way to do it. Thank you. No worries. Okay, no, again, I saw a couple of hands, so just we've got a few, a couple of minutes longer before we get started. So anybody else just got a, a, an urgent question they'd really like an answer to before we get into this, this next session? No? Excellent. All right. So what I think we'll do then is, like I said, this session is going to be quite tech heavy. I'm not going to spend too much, too much longer before handing over to Manu and she'll take over and expertly take you through from start to finish in setting up an Eventbrite. Eventbrite is a really powerful tool as well. And there's so much you can do with it. And, uh, and, and as you'll see when Mana goes through, the way that you can push it out to different medias and different, different social media sites and things like that is, is really good. It can get quite tricky. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you're taking notes, fantastic. But then again, if uh, we will, I, I, like you say, you can watch the re-recording at, at any point and we'll try and send you some notes out as well. But this is uh, hopefully the last sort of tech heavy. And, and let's just, like you say, once you get the tech out of the way, you can get back to doing the things that you really enjoy, which is actually leading meditation groups. So without further ado, I'll pass you on to Mana. Mana, are you ready to set the next section? Yes. Yes, that's fantastic. So what, what we'll do is I'll pass you on to Mana. She'll take you through and, I'll, and then I'll close the session at the end. All right, Mana, over to you. Thank you. Hi everyone, how have you been? Good. Did you try your Zoom at all? Anybody even just got into the Zoom and thought, oh no, that's not for me? <laughs> all right, okay. So what I, what I thought is, uh, I'll quickly run you through the Zoom account meeting anyway, so that we can, we can see what we did very quickly because it's very easy. It will not take, once you, uh, the very reason why we gave this task of saying, okay, Hi, Joanne, it's a beautiful long just started today. It's all right. <laughs> all right. So it's on your own. It's pretty easy. It's very straightforward. It's very much logic. So number one, I would say is get rid of that fear that it is sticky. Nothing. It's pretty much like you making your pasta. You need and you put together and you cook it. That's it. It's only that much. It's just logic. So don't worry about that. It's just cooking pasta. All you need is pasta, sauce, and a stove, and you put them together. You cook it. It's only that. All right. It's that easy. So don't keep anything, just listen to this and take it as a common sense story. That is a story, all right? Okay, I'll share my screen. Uh, I would not be able to see you as, um, as I'm sharing my screen. So what I would really like you to do is, if anywhere you have questions as I'm taking you through the process, just unmute yourself and ask me then and there so we can do it together. Are you with me? Yeah, all right. Okay, so unmute and ask me the question. So even though I can't see you, just give me your name and say this is a question so I can just press them on there. All right, so I'm sharing my screen, be ready. All right.
So what uh, this is the can you see my body? So this is an even bright screen and pretty much what we do is there are various other platforms as well which you can use for marketing your events. So even what will even bright. So these are all the various platforms. But so far, it to be quite popular because it reaches to more than about 500 to 600,000 people for any event around the world. So your reach is much higher and larger, your audience. So that's the reason why we are walking through even by even bright and it's pretty much easy to integrate into your Facebook as well. So all you do is get into even bright. Email, email address over there. And what we are doing at this stage is just familiarizing ourselves with the screen. That's it. We are not doing anything. We are just filling ourselves with the basic screen of Eventbrite. So there you go. That's your profile. You clicked on it. This is the screen you see. And you click info. And this is the page that comes up. So pretty much you can change your email address. What you want to use for credit uh, at this stage, for your business, you will not need to not ignore that. All we look at is contact in page. Are you with me? Just show me a raise of hand. So in between, I'll try to see the girl review. That's it. So contact in faster, ready. That's it. Now we go into organizer. Organizer is pretty much your business. What is your business? That's it. So we'll see how we go with the organizer. Not yet, but you'll only be needing your contact info page and an organizer page. That's all you would need and your payout methods. Payout methods is where when you run an event for at a price, then this screen opens up saying give, a, give your bank account details. That's all you need to know here. And because this is a free event, you don't see anything here. All right, so we just saw contact info page, organizer, we do, we'll go into details later, your payout method where you give your bank account details because this is a free event, you don't see that, but I'll show you how the screen looks as well. So are we okay so far? Good. Now when we go into the screen here, so that's about your profile. Don't have to worry about tickets is pretty much the tickets that you purchased for some of the events, not these tickets for this event. Like following collections, don't worry about that at this stage. Interest, don't worry about that at this stage. You can straight go into manage events. Before going into manage events, sorry, I'll also quickly run you through the organizer profile. Right. So here, so contact info is, for example, seeing Jane here, straight the first part name over here. So I'm saying Jane. So Jane, the first page what we saw for contact info is about you, about Jane. The first page what we saw. Then when we come to this organizer profile, if you have a business, you can use your business name here, and you can use your business logo. So you can update your logo. So that's my logo I updated there. So I got my info is manner personally, and this is organizer profile is your business. So business logo, business name, your country, and you will find something interesting here, which is add organizer profile. So Jane created an Eventbrite account. And then when you're running an, she was asking me today, how can I run a session from her business name? So if you have a business name, Jane, do you have a business name or are you a sole trader? Okay. 
Hi, Mana. No, right now I don't have a business name. So it's just right. a sole trader. Sole trader. Okay. And do you have a Facebook page? Um, just my own Facebook page. Yeah, your personal page, Facebook page. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you can have your Facebook page. All right. So you can unmute now. So you can mute now. So what happens is if you have a business name or if you yourself are a sole trader, what you can do is click here, add organizer profile. And when you click your organizer profile here, you can add your logo there and the organizer name, your website details here. And the trickiest thing is the idea, whole idea is to connect your Eventbrite to Facebook. So what you need to do is if you go down, 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 down here, it will show. So you have to update the Facebook ID. So now question. Where do you get this Facebook ID? You go into your Facebook page. You may have n number of pages you're managing. And I'll see if I can share my Facebook page. So can you see my Facebook page, everyone? Can you see my Facebook page? Perfect. Okay. So all you do is go into your page, which is your business. So I'm going into manage pages. I manage all these pages. So I go into this one, Skillful Mind is organizer for this event. So go to your Facebook page and then you click on that. And down right at the bottom. Taking time. about okay so you'll see here see this page id that's the one you'll copy and paste it make sense are you with me that's it so the moment you take the facebook id and paste it there that makes your whole life easier all right, that's all you have to do with the organizer. So you finish your contact info, which is about you. You finish your organizer info, which is organizer profile. And then we go into managing your events. So we'll see where our events here. So you can either click here, events. I already have a few events here, but it's pretty straightforward. See, create event, go there. And this is the screen you will see. Let's start with the basics, which is we are trying to just get our tomatoes for pasta. So you put your event title here. So the easiest thing what you can do is, I'll show you the screen, which I already prepared and I kept it, so I thought it would be easier which is text for demo that would make your life easier if you do that so what i did here can you all see my word document here can you see my word document good okay so what i did is the text i want to be get ready for for creating my event what's the title of my session i created my zoom meeting already so i have the url and i got this text ready And what I also did is I created this folder. Can you see my screen with this image? Okay, so that's the image for my event. And I also created the text for my event. I got it ready. So now it's only easy. It's about cooking. Let's go. So a new share. We're going to our Chrome. So you see the screen? So now what we do, just go in here, give your title, even title I'm calling it. You have 75 alphabets limit over there. So I'm saying I'll call it how to accelerate and get 
start with. So that's it. You have a limit over there. Then you're going to type. This can be mostly a count meeting or networking event, or you can do class training or workshop. Category would be health and wellness because the, it's funny you may say mindset, but that's not in here. So you just choose health and wellness. And then subcategory is mental health. So you can add tag words here, which is hash and call meditation. Oh, sorry, you can only give one tag at a time. Add, then you do the next one meditation. Add. So people know if anybody is searching for that, then the I'll explain why these tags are important. So mind, mental health. So your audience probably would be searching for meditation events based on these tags here. So another thing, people are stressed, so they want to be calm. So these are the words, giving these words. When people are searching for events or when they do it, going on Google and searching, I want some distress, for example, that's another word, distress, because the current situation is all about stress, the distress. So what Eventbrite, why Eventbrite is a good platform is because the moment you set your event up there on Eventbrite, Eventbrite does the ad search for you. And anybody is searching for these words, it will bring up these events for them onto the, onto the priority list. So you go and you can go up to 10 tags. I just did five. Organizer, here we created CF Skillful Mind as an organizer. There you go. So this is the reason why it's important to get your organizer info and your Facebook ID already set. So the moment you give organizer Skillful Mind, your event bride is already searching for Facebook page behind by the time you finish it. And I would like to see you here because when everybody is talking about techie, this is the only area that you need to take care of, location. So from Eventbrite, what I would suggest is just create an event as if you are running the session from your physical address, from your place, wherever you are, instead of saying it online. So when you click on this venue, it says venue, online event to be announced. If you choose online event or to be announced, you can't push it into the Facebook. So you choose venue and then give some address over there. So in this case, I'm saying five bundle drive. So it took the address there, that's it. And then save and continue. Are you with me so far? So that's it, we finished our basic info. Now we go into details. When you go into your details, I already got my demo ready here, summary. So I got my sessions sorted out. So all I have to do, go get my summary up there. Say you have a word limit, 140, so it's 122. So that's perfect. And then what I'm also doing is I'm giving my description, which is here, which I already prepared. So I'm just copying it, my right up there. Do you see this? Can you see the description? So you already prepared your write-up, so it's just putting it in, adding it there. And also one thing that I've done here is I've added this join Zoom meeting link over here. So the reason why we added that there, even if you have a technical days or if they cannot access, they can not see this email in the inbox and they can do this link on Zoom anywhere, the Zoom meeting link over here. That's it, all done. So location is set, you don't have to go bother about any of that statement. Easy. So your basic in your details are done. Now we are up to tickets. So when you go to the tickets, you have options. You go and go for paid. I think Julianne was asking me last time about paid options. So you have three options here, paid, free, and donations. So paid, 
is where you set a price and Eventbrite takes approximately 9.3 percentage from your fee, from your service, from your charge as Eventbrite fee. Free is just free, then there's no charge for that if you're setting up any free uh, events. Donation is where you don't have to give a specific amount. Whatever the, your user, attendees can donate what they wish. So at the time of registration, they, makes, they can choose the amount instead of a fixed amount. So for these purposes, we would go and say donation of, let's go with the free. So you can change the name. So I'm saying session for tickets. To accelerate your business. So you have a limit over there. Quantity, you can set your quantity. Say I'm saying 35. Price is free. And this is the sale start date and end date. I'm starting till tonight, 30th of March, and say the session, the fourth session is happening on Saturday, which is the 4th of April. So we have this, you can also choose the time. So up to 8 p.m., I'm allowing anybody can register. So the sale is on. It's easy. That's it, save it. That's it. And then you finish. So, Mana, yeah. with, with that, um, where were you? With the tickets, you put in 35. So, 35, say if you had, um, yeah, oh, that's just, just for just one for event, event, is it? It's, yeah, okay, yeah. all right, sorry. I got a bit confused because you put in no. dates and I thought, oh, it was 35 for one event yeah. or four events, but that's okay. okay. I really so, the dates are... You created the event now, you're publishing it on 30th of March. So pretty much you're publishing it, your sale is on. And your sale is on to the point your event starts. So this event, we scheduled to 4th of April. So right to the point of 8 p.m., 4th of April, this sale is on. So that's, that's the dates. So it's not multiple events. Make sense? That's it. And then you can go ahead and publish this. That's all. So there's no... Manner, it's Kate. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, if you are doing a paid event, but like you did with this one, you want to give some people a discount code, how can, yeah. where is it that you do that? Can you please show that? All right, yeah. So if you want to give a discount code, because this is a free event, I wonder if you get it. So what we do is for our test purposes, what we do, we create a sticker paid so because if you don't pay then you don't get the discount code so i'm just editing it so sorry for anybody this is the same thing so this is this can happen to you so now i created for free and i'm thinking oops i forgot to give the price easy all you have to do go edit and say i'm saying it's a paid just for this time being session four and I'm saying price $15, yeah, for one session, for one person. And 9.2 percentage. So we have this option called absorb fee, which is even bright, they charge you 9.2 percentage. So if you take this, so that $15 includes 9.2 percentage. If you don't do this, you can see this price 16.91. So I'm saying absorb the fee. And your tickets are still on, and you go save it. All right, so now you got the ticket. So now what you can do, option. I think you had to save it to go with it. Just a second. There should be edit. If you go down the advanced settings, and that's mm, I'm having a moment, Kate. I'll just get back to you. Okay, we can do that. I'll show you how we can do that. It's easy. It's just that I'm having a moment. Okay, so that's a paid option. We Hi, saved Jill. it. Uh, I was just yeah. wondering. So, putting an amount of thirty-five people on there, 
Um, mm -hmm. If you're doing a paid one and you're wanting yeah. as many people to come possible, so would you not put 35 on there? Would you leave it blank or? or oh, it's, up to, it's up to you. Sorry, Jules. So, yeah, if, if you want to change it to... You based on your venue capacity. If you have hundred, you can hundred people. But, but it always good. I think uh, Andy will agree with me. It's always good to create that kind of limited uh, capacity because if you if you understand, it's kind of demotivating for you as well as for others also. So it's okay. good to go and just put that number in there because that's what. Okay, great. Think. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we saved it, and then so Kate, I'll come back to you, okay? Because I definitely know that it's just. It should be under it. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and publish it. And then I come back to that. Um, manager, um, before you move on, there's a question here. Yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. There's a question in the. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Who's that? that sorry, this is Sarah. That, that um, message from Joanna. All right. So, what's the question? Can you expand the information about adding a venue? If we're doing a session online, won't people get confused if we add an actual location? And can you tell yeah. us more about pushing to Facebook and why that's important? Yeah, so just hold on, just stay with me for the next 10 minutes and that will be addressed while we are doing it. It's 10 minutes, Joan. All right, so then what we are doing now is we go to Facebook events. So what we are saying, how to accelerate and get started, add this event to Facebook in three simple steps, Facebook events. So, so because we already created our Facebook page ID there, published this event to Skillful Mind, and I'm just choosing. That's the address we have given over there, so I'm just choosing it, continue. And if you want to, you can add co-hosts, like if two or three people coming together and doing that, say you can add new co-host over here and continue. So I'm saying publish now, you can finish it. So that gets published onto Facebook. Hello, Mana. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, I just missed the bit where you, where it went to Facebook and you chose the organisation and what, um, yeah, what happened after that? I chose the organisation and I just said continue. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so this error is not because of the glitch that's happening today. Everybody here complained about today there's some delay in Facebook taking events from Eventbrite. So there's just a time lag, but there's nothing wrong with it. So you can just go with it. So the moment you say finish and it says that it's already added into your Facebook, what you see from in your Facebook page is I already... I was expecting some glitch like this today, so I just go and show you how that appears into your Facebook page. So if you go to your Facebook page events, and all you have to do is you don't even have to do import event. You can see here, it just automatically comes in into your Facebook page under your events. Okay, are you, are you with me so far? 
Yeah, all right. Okay, so it's done. So pretty much you're done with setting up, creating an event, pushing into the Facebook page. You're all set. Sorry, Mena. Yeah. Um, I I must have missed somewhere about putting the photo in for the event. I saw that you when you showed us you had a photo and you had the text in a folder. We just have to upload over the OLED. Oh, sorry, okay. we go there. Thank you. So we went into our details. Yeah, that's right. I think I just okay. So we go here. That's right. So thanks, Julian. That's right. So it, I'll show you again. So we went into details, and I think I went straight into the session four. We missed this bit of uploading your image. So we go choose the image from there, and I've already got the image here. Sorry, which step is this after? Basic info. After that, the details. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Oh, right. So here, can you see where I'm highlighting the, you can see the pointer here, details. So click on details and that's the first screen you would see. And that's the image. That's where you would upload your image. Are you with Julian? Um, yeah, I was just taking notes and I'm just trying to find where in my notes it fits. It's in details just before updating your session summary. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. So now what you can do is you can you can go into your payments here because this is a paid event and you have payout method. So, okay. So before going into this step, I just want to quickly run through. We did basic info, we did details, we created a ticket and we added to Facebook and we published it. That's done. Are you with me so far? Okay. So now what we are doing is, now it's a paid event and you need a bank account where even bright should transfer money into your account so where do you give those bank account details so we're going to come to payments method so you're giving you're telling even bright that this is a bank account and we'll set up here add payout method you choose and you choose your account bank account details address bsb your account number that's it and then you create so that's where you give your bank account details to even right that's under payments option payments pay are you with me okay so that's it this is pretty much your procedure that's all done you pushed into your facebook and it is all over there over now, Joanne asking, it's an online event. How do we go about it? So once you push the event into Facebook and it's all out there, now what you have to do is go into your details again. Details or basic info. One second, I'll just confirm that. Your location is in basic info. My bad, yeah, just go into basic info. And we choose the location to. We'll choose edit the location to online event. So the moment you do that, can you see here? There is no, you only see info, details, and tickets. After publishing, all you did is went into the location, changed it to online event, and then you're saving it. The moment you saved it as an online event, do you see this here, digital links? That came up? That's it. So go into the digital links and add your Zoom account over here and people will know that they have to access. So go add digital links, add webinar, this webinar link, which we already created from your Zoom. All you have to do is that Meeting ID. That's 
for the test purposes session for sale. Updated. Okay, so I'll just unshare the screen and then we'll again come back. So far, any questions here? Is there any anything you thought, oh, this didn't go well, or this is tricky? Did anything? Is there? Yeah. Yes, that is here. Yeah, so basically you said though, if you put, if you choose venue as online, then you won't yeah. be able to push that onto Facebook. Yeah. And this is the reason why you choose the actual venue as a place. But what if you don't want to put your address on there? You can, you can yeah. choose. Oh, yeah, that, that would be trickier because you should be able to, I'll show you that. Okay, so what if you decide not to put your address in there? And if you mm -hmm. just choose Adelaide or any in general any other place it would normally ask you for an address but if you don't do that you can't push it into facebook so you have to create separate event in facebook and then share the link over there oh i see okay yeah, yeah. okay That's the only right. thing. otherwise no other challenge over there it's just that you can't push straight into facebook you have to create it there as well all right, all right any thank you any more questions so far Yeah, can you, um, have you remembered the, about the discount code? Do you think that you could just show yeah, us how to do I'll that? I'll come to that. So I remember Kate's query about discount code, which I'll show now. And um, I'll, we'll also talk about attendees. So, so far, this is all it is. Publishing your event is easy. That's all. So now what I would do is I'll do a quick recap, and then we know what we are doing. So all we did, we went to create event and we saw this screen here, basic info. We gave the event title, we chose this category and subcategory, we created the tags and we also created the organizer profile so we can just choose the organizer profile because it's already created. We went and created the physical address for location, we chose the date and time. So basic info, then we went into details where we created it, we uploaded the image, gave this also your description showed we include your zoom here just in case if people can't access the link otherwise with any technical glitch in the future. And also what you can do is you can use this, you can copy paste the zoom link onto Facebook, WhatsApp group, Skype, anywhere you can directly go and do that. So no other challenges here. And then you go into your tickets. And we created the tickets. So we paid free donation and we just went ahead and did that and we did it. And if you start from here, you can invite and promote and add to Facebook from here. Now, under invite and promote again, into case query, invite and promote option discount and access codes. You click on the discount and access codes. Continue. Save and finish. That's it. So your code is already created. So once you created your event, you got your discount, you updated with the Facebook, now all you, and you can see your event already published on Eventbrite.
that's it. It's the tickets. It's all set up over here. You got this session four about this event. You got the Zoom link. Even if you just give this link to people, they can access the Zoom link from here, date and time. You can talk you through this. Any questions? All good so far? Or is um, it there's a couple of questions in the chat. So Monica's asking anything to be aware of if we need to change the date. Oh yes. So if you had to change the dates, once you publish the event, you can't go and change the dates. So you have to unpublish and then change the dates and go back. So you have to be careful with the dates. That's the only that's the only feature you can't change once you publish. Everything else you can change. Um, and a question from Helen: Will it allow you to give a hundred percent discount if you wish for someone to have a free session? Can you pardon? I couldn't get that question right. Can you give a hundred percent discount uh, to someone if you want them to have a free session? Uh, that's tricky because you, you choose your events and if you're saying you only want to give them 10% discount if they're buying from Eventbrite, then you can't do that. No, but you can create a coupon which is 100% discount. Yes, you can create multiple promo codes for 100% discount, yes. You can actually create two or three types of tickets at the same time and then you can give your but at, the, at this point of time, I didn't want to go into those details because it would confuse you further. So what I would say is today, because once you create your Zoom meeting, get the link, create an Eventbrite account, push it into Facebook. Then if you have any challenges, please come back and then we can go further into the complexities of you can have multiple types of tickets, you can have multiple promo codes and um, you can have multiple organizers. So we will go into that in the next uh, session once you go and do this basic stuff and come back otherwise it would be too confusing for you and Joanna asked is there a way to add a live link what do you mean by that Joanna uh, yeah hi um, it's Joanna here sorry um, yeah so what I was asking uh, because you've you copied and pasted the Zoom link in there um, mm -hmm. is it possible to actually add the live link to the Zoom page, you know, like I so said, people don't have to copy and paste. Yeah. So if you see, uh, let me you know see. what I mean? Like as you would in an email or whatever. Yeah. So what would happen is if people come to your event and they buy the ticket, I'll show the screen. I'll, I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, my Outlook. I'll often get a um, confirmation email and the email has the live link. Right. Yeah. So I'll just show that email to Joanna. So, so Joanna, I kind of, I'm just showing you how the email looks. So say for example, you got uh, um, let me see if it is in here. That's a notification. I'm waiting for a confirmation email. These are all notifications. I don't have an email. Show you. I can show I can, you. I can. I understand that um, in emails, you know, you can usually um, copy and paste the live link in there. But yeah. I was just wondering, it may be <clears throat> difficult, um, you know, with the with the Eventbrite. Uh, thing that was all on the page I don't think the link comes up as a live link but in the email it comes up as a live link but really I don't think it's too hard to copy and paste the live link into a browser it's not mm -hmm. actually very long and I don't know if you've used Zoom before but you can actually open zoom up and it asks for the ID so you can actually just type in those seven numbers or whatever it is and it'll do the same thing as clicking that line. Right, thank you. Just open thank that you. meeting room. All right. So Joanna, I'm just sharing my screen to show you something here to answer your query. So 
if you go into your Facebook page, once your event is already there, and then probably you can add your live link out there as well. So if that's the session there, and in your event, you can actually go and make those changes. And here you can add that live link. We can't see your screen, I don't think. Oh, really? But yeah, there's nothing to stop you from um, hand creating a Facebook event or a Facebook post um, as we did and created uh, yeah, the links on there directly. Okay, can you see my screen now? Can you see, yeah. All right, okay, so Jonah, so what you can do is you can create, you can add the live link over here in your Facebook once the event is pushed over here. Is that right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, all right. Or what you can also do is you can go into your find tickets in your Facebook page. Once you get into, once you access the front page, that, that will already have the live link out there. People can access it. It's not the Facebook. That's today's meeting, so it's ended. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So if we go into the, I'll go into another session then. Let's see. I created another oh. test one, so just to show you that, and then you can actually add that there. So, okay, that's the test that I created. So if you go here. You can access, you can create this in under find tickets. The Facebook already up takes that live link over here. So people can access that from here. Online events. So if they get this ticket when they go, they buy this ticket, they get access to this live event from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Any more so far? Um, okay, sorry. so I'll quickly now show you about just creating your reminders and ending. Mm, who's Sarah. that? Sorry. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, sorry. Sarah. Um, earlier, so Jules had sent me a link to her URL for her event, um, Zoom event. And it wasn't just that short code, it wasn't just seven numbers, it was a really long URL. Um, I'm not, maybe it was copy and pasted from the browser. But could you maybe just show once really quickly where? they can find that small number URL. All right, so. So just quickly, what you'll find is it probably has the short URL, question mark, and then the whole lot of text past that with hash, uh, I'm something equals something. And what those codes are doing is they're cookies and they're taking people's data. So you can actually delete all the URL right up to the question mark, including the question mark, and that, that will leave you with the base URL, and you can use that URL to post everywhere. Hope that explains it. But um, the way cookies work is they put on extensions to a URL which captures various data about that person, um, which you don't need. It's, it's only for more tech stuff. Um, so Sarah, sorry, uh, Pete, thanks for that. So Sarah, all, all you have to do is if you go into your meeting and it, there's a link that's called join Zoom meeting. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show you that screen. Hold on, just bear with me. So you, I'll give you those seven digits what you can take from there. So we did the text for demo. So can you see my Word document here? Can you see my Word document? Okay, so if you see in your Zoom meetings, when you go to start copying invitation, this is the link you would see. So all you have to do is, whatever is there after that, ignore and just take, that's it. That's the only link you will take to copy paste anywhere. So you can ignore all that other lendier version that what Julianne was seeing. You can ignore that.
Do you want to say your query, say that? No, that's it. No, all right. Okay. So, so now we did basic info, details, tickets. We also learned how to create a discount code and a promo code for tickets. We also saw how we can update the URL in Facebook. So I'll quickly show you how to set your reminders for your event and also just to get your attendee list. There are two steps. I really, really urge you to go and try it out. So say go to manage events. So how to accelerate and get started. That's the event we created just now. So you can go and click on it. Can you see my screen, everyone? And go manage attendees. There you can go to emails to attendees. And here you can schedule your reminders. So here by default, there's a reminder two days before the event. And if you want to create another reminder, you just do create new attendee email. And you can do name, reply to subject, give you a message here. Normally they suggest that by the people, People find it easy if they use Arial 14 points because that's visible, easily visible. And based on the crowd that you have got as your audience, go for 16 points, give your subject in there, and you can send your text message to yourself. You choose either to send it now, or you can choose the time, or you can say how many hours or minutes before the event you want reminders. You can set weekly reminders, monthly reminders, hour, hourly reminders, but this is where you can go and do your reminders. So just for the reminder sake, again, it is manage attendee. Click on that and then emails to attendees. That's it. And there you will set your reminders. That's it. Easy. I have a question. Yeah. Um, in regards to, <coughs> excuse me, the emails, um, yeah. like can you import emails or yeah. are the emails captured when they sign up? Okay. When they register? You. All right. I can show that, Johanna. Yeah. Only because, you know, if you're entering one by one, that'd be a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, no, you wouldn't be doing that. Here, the moment, it's an email to attendees, which is automated. So Eventbrite kind of sends out all the emails to the people who already registered for your event. It does that on its own. So you don't have to worry about that. But say you're, you're running next meditation event and you want to send an email to all the people who participated in the last event. So all you have to do is you can go here same under manage attendees, click on attendee list. Okay. And you can download that in PDF format or an Excel format, but it's easier if you can just copy, download it in spreadsheet format, and that makes your life a lot easier. So what you can do, I'll show the screen. So if you download that, that's how your list looks like. So all the attendees from the last event, I downloaded the list in spreadsheet format. Can you see my spreadsheet, everyone? Yes. Yeah. So this is how you can import all your attendees list from your previous events. And all you have to do is copy all these email addresses, put it in an email, and you can use it for your future correspondence also. So if you would have seen today, I sent one email just 10 minutes before saying, Meeting starts in 10 minutes. That's what I did. I went to the previous event, downloaded the attendees list, and I sent a reminder to everyone. So you don't have to take, choose one by one or don't want to worry about registrations. You can go and download once you create your event there. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions so far? All right, I think it's a bit loaded now. So <laughs> I'll stop it here, but I would strongly urge you to please go ahead and create your We Are With You, me and Ian, Peter and Sarah, We Are With You. Please, please go and create a Zoom account and set up a Zoom meeting. Please create an Eventbrite account because unless you do it, you will not know what your challenges are. Do that. And when we meet on Wednesday, 
I would really like to say that we should have all the people showing up hands saying, yes, we have Zoom account, Zoom meeting, even bright pushed onto Facebook. That's our target for next meeting. Are you with me? <laughs> all right, okay then. So I'll give it over to Andy. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, I'm also in Skillful Mind Meditation Leaders Group. Peter has added me to that. Keep posting your questions as you're working on that and we can work together. All right, over to you, Andy. You can lighten up now. Now that I created. Okay, thank you. Now I know, I know Mana said it was very much just like a recipe. Who's feeling cooked? Right? <laughs> I know that <laughs> there can be an awful lot of things to remember, an awful lot of things to do. Uh, but it is just getting used to it and actually getting on and doing it. The more you get into it and just constantly use it, the more it becomes like second nature. If you, if you don't do anything until Wednesday or Thursday, you've forgotten half of the things as well. So my suggestion would be, get on, a, when you finish this meeting, get on and do it. You know, especially, maybe not for those in Australia, but for those in the UK, it's still early morning. You can, you can get on there, you can get that done before lunchtime and have it set up and be a master by the time we get to the next session. And talking of the next session, like I said, most of this, most of this work getting to that, which is really important, now it's about, you know, you getting back and doing the things that you love about meditation and really hosting a session on there. So what the session is, it's the power session that we're going to do next. So what we're going to be looking at is the power of positioning, the power of thirds, the power of the lighting that you use, the power of your equipment, and the power of authenticity in presenting. So they're the things we're going to be looking at in the next session. I've just been creating that today, and I'm actually really excited. It's going to be a quite a good session. Also, be prepared, because I'm going to ask you to be doing some stuff as we're, as we're going through. So I will stop you at certain points, and I might say, right, now I want you to do this. And you, you won't be expected to present, so don't worry. But what you will be expected to do is... is just take a, a few notes of what I've been saying and actually just maybe reposition your camera, look at the lighting and all this sort of thing as well. But we'll go through it and I'll give you the understanding why these things are important. So I think, like I said, we're a bit over time as well, so I won't go on too much longer, but I really want you to get organized with that. And like I said, for those people that have gone with us on this journey on all four sessions, as Peter was saying earlier, you get the option to have some coaching with us. So it might be some coaching on some more business side. It might be some coaching on, on potentially um, uh, anything that you want within, within your leadership and within your uh, leadership of meditation group. So that's a really exciting thing that, that's only just been added today. That's what we've decided to put on. So it's really exciting. I hope you all jump on and make the most of that while it's, well, it's not costing you anything, right? This is, this is, Skillful Minds way of supporting you as a leader. So with that, I don't know if anybody else, I mean, last time we did as well, we stayed on a few moments after the meeting ended, if anybody's got any extra questions. Other than that, I think we'll end the meeting there and we'll see you in the next session. So thank you for your time. I hope you're still fairly fresh mind and you can go and get some, get, get some things happening. All right, so. I'll sign off here. I don't know if anybody, if Peter wants to say anything just in, just in closing, but if not, we'll hang on and we'll answer some questions for you if we can. Okay. I have uh, to, I have just, when, when is that next meeting? Was it Wednesday? So it's Wednesday at the same time. Yeah. Sorry, I should have said yes. I should have mentioned when the next meeting was. Wednesday. And then the fourth one will be Saturday, same time. Saturday, same time for, for the fourth one. Oh, okay. Wednesday, 8 p.m. and then Saturday. And these are all being um, recorded, aren't they? So um, we can access them in the vault. Is that where we can get them if we want to listen to them again? Absolutely. Yes. Brilliant. So, yeah. So thanks, Andy. Thanks, Mana. We've had lots of um, uh, thank, you. thank yous from the other people on the chat line. And we'll stop the recording there. And then uh, we'll be online if you guys have any other particular questions. Yeah, and just to let you know, the event is now on Facebook. What we published, it's all there already. So it's easy. I just checked it for the, how long. It's taking about 10 minutes to get onto your Facebook from your Eventbrite. So when you're trying it, 
just be patient for 10 minutes. Ah, so that's interesting. So when you push it through to Facebook, it takes a bit of time to, to come. It's about 10 minutes, yeah. So it's, it's now on there on Facebook. I just tested it, checked it. Okay, good. No, no. All right, no worries. All right. So yeah, stop the recording. I